Assalamu alaikum. This is Manu Radil from OCLP UMT, Office of Corporate Linkages and Placements at University of Management and Technology. Under the vision of our president, UMT, Mr. Ibrahim Hassan Murad, has launched high impact, iconic learning and developed focus virtual career week 2021 on the theme of chasing the dream career 2030. To prepare the students and facilitate them to emerge as marketable graduates for the future world of work. This career week is one of a kind in engaging platforms that has brought together the biggest, smartest, and brightest gurus, speakers, panelists, and success icons from all walks of life. Furthermore, this career week has also provided a platform to the corporate sector to introduce their companies to a diverse crowd of students and to get a pipeline of talent as your future workforce, as we have 25,000 plus students and 20,000 plus alumni, and they are not only their potential employees for the future, but their current consumer and future influencers as well. Talking specifically about today's theme, so today's theme is Hustle Hut, whereby we have planned this session, CV resume writing workshop for, for our students by Verda, for the students of STD, our textile designing students and SAP Architectural School. The purpose of this session is basically to escalate uh, the marketability of UMT students in a show way of being more prepared for starting the career, specifically uh, uh, for our students. Uh, initiating this session, I would like to give a brief uh, introduction about the speaker, which is uh, Sir Faiz Rashid. He's representing Verda, which is uh, which is a premium company of uh, branding, uh, clothes, clothes, clothes brand, branding, basically. And um, Sir Faiz is basically a LUMS alumni, did his bachelor's and MBA both from LUMS. Uh, he has worked in media industry at Media West. He worked at Procter & Gamble in marketing department for quite some time. Uh, then he had worked at uh, Total Parco two years as a uh, sales analyst. Now he's working at Verda as a brand and communications manager for the past three years. I would also like to give a brief introduction about this company, Verda, as we all know that is the premium women clothing brand with a dense retail footprint spread across the country, founded in 2006 as a single store company. Now it has 100 plus stores all over the, na all over the uh, nation. Verda now framed uh, for the premium quality, best price brand, and fashion-centric outfits for the women. With all its retail stores all over the Pakistan, brand is giving a, giving a fashion uh, and promising, is very promising to uh, consumers and customers for the quality, style, fashion, unbeatable prices. Verda's speci specialty is in prints and ready-to-wear fret clothing for voile, lawn, chiffon, woolen, uh, cotton, khadr, and silk for women. Now I would like to take uh, questions and I would like Sir Faiz to start uh, with the session and um, guide our students about CV and resume writing and um, give, them, give them a thorough view of how their CV should be, uh, should be, you know, it should be seen, what should be the outlook of that, just um, over to you now, sir. Thank you, Manu, for the wonderful introduction there. Um, so, Assalamu and good afternoon to all of the bright young students uh, who are a part of this session as well. Um, I really appreciate the effort of the team which is uh, organizing this because uh, I remember that uh, at the time that I was going into the job market, um, I was also looking for such solutions where, you know, someone would just guide me and tell me, okay, this is required and not required, and not just kind of be on your own when you're sending CVs to different companies. Uh, so great initiative, I must say. Um, so as far as uh, this uh, session is concerned, um, so what we can do is that we can do this two ways. Um, one can be that uh, maybe I can um, take it uh, according to what I have structured. I have a few slides to show you. Um, these are basic slides on what you must do and what you must not do. And uh, I always love taking uh, questions. So anyone in between who has a question, I'm, I'm not sure if the virtual hand uh, 
raising thing is available in this application but if it is so i'd love uh, management to kind of activate it and uh, whenever you guys have question please do raise your hand i'll stop right in there and uh, answer your questions uh, once i'm done with the presentation then maybe what uh, maru can do is that she can um, share the cvs that she has with her and uh, i can kind of point out uh, what people are doing uh, correctly and uh, what can be improved in the cv um so definitely fais uh, definitely that Uh, that option is available for the students i would like as many questions as they 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 would like and i'll i'll be conveying them to you uh, i'll be showing cvs uh, in which you can guide them ke kya cheeze hain jo ke important hain kya cheeze unimportant hai being a part of this industry because her cv her domain ke hisab se honi chahiye uh, and uh, yes over to you okay um thank you so uh, as far as the part of uh, specific to this industry is concerned so what happens is that a cv is uh, it has a general format for all industries but what i will do is that each point that i make i will try to kind of give relevant examples from the industry so the students here obviously can relate to it and kind of see that how they can do this in their cv as well okay so what i am going to do is that uh, i'll share my screen i have a few slides with me so just kind of uh, covering the basics initially i'll give you uh, industry relevant examples uh, along with it and uh, i'll be happy to answer any questions i hope you guys can see my screen Uh, Manu, can you confirm this? Yes, is visible? it's it's visible. Yes. Okay. It's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, so I particularly like to start off with um, what you have to do before you kind of start writing the CV. Um, this is something that uh, a lot of uh, people do definitely miss out. Um, they just pick up the uh, the log into Word and start writing down whatever comes to their mind. Uh, but i really believe that uh, pre writing research is definitely important for a cv and what that means is that for example if you're going into the fashion industry or the textile industry or the architecture industry you kind of need to see that what are the popular skills that are required nowadays so let's say if a textile designer is kind of applying to a company um, what he or she has to do is that what are the new designing techniques what are the new cutting techniques that are in fashion and whether he or she has kind of done that work um in her previous experiences or not right so you really need to kind of jot down the requirements from the specific industry and this requirement would include first of all the hot and popular skills that are required in the industry and secondly kind of taking notes from the job description and candidate requirement um so i get a lot of cvs of people you know where i require experience of 2 years but fresh uh, graduates are applying on it as well even though i clearly mentioned it um so what that does is kind of leaves a bad impression so really kind of go through the candidate requirement see what uh, the employer is kind of is looking for and then decide whether you want to apply for it or not um another reason that i do mention the candidate requirement is for example um if a candidate requirement is that you need to know how to use a specific digital machine of embroidery um in wardha or for example in khadi or anywhere and you don't know how to do that then There's no point in applying, right? But if you know how to do it, you will specifically highlight that point in your CV somewhere above, or where the employer can kind of uh, reach out to it in a very um, easy manner. So that is why it is very important to kind of look at the candidate requirement and the skills in your industry specifically. Um, when I talk about languages and qualification, so here what happens is, so for example, there are certain uh, that kind of require a master's degree. So you need to have a master's degree in textile design or architecture or anything to kind of get that. Managerial level position or something. So do look at that and the languages needed as well. Um, at this stage, do not worry about the soft skills. So by this, what I mean is that, for example, if a position says that you need need to be good at problem solving, but what you think is that you're not good at problem solving, don't let this be a hurdle in saying, okay, I cannot apply to this position, because soft skill is something that you can kind of learn on the job as well. Uh, especially uh, if you have a good mentor or a good manager or a good uh, boss over there and uh, if you make a case that you know the other things that are needed for the job are um, pretty much uh, really good so you can kind of compensate for the soft skills at this time and maybe improve on that when you come to the job 
and uh, finally is do i even qualify for this job and and uh, this is not a joke i get tons of <laughs> sorry um cv in my inbox where um people have uh, really not read anything about the requirement that they send in the cv because they kind of just didn't look for the job um what you need to understand is that for example if you're talking about the textile designing or architecture specifically in pakistan there are very few big names over here right um when i talk about big names that were like doing their business in billions um so if there are people there are various people over there and the market is very small and you're just sending in your cv uh, without looking at what the requirements are or anything and just for the sake of it uh, your reputation will be um, really bad in that company so even if you then send it for a different position in the future um it won't be of any use uh, so this is basically a pre writing research uh, before i move on do i have any questions manu uh, so um uh, i would like you to continue as soon as i'll be receiving questions and other more uh, uh, you know suggestions i'll let you know okay thank you students are joining and uh, so far the response is good okay okay thank you um so if i move on from the pre writing research to kind of the structure of the cv uh, as well so this is something which is again uh, a very subjective question over here so if someone comes and asks me that what is the best way to kind of structure your cv and where to put things and not um there is no honestly right answer to it um you just have to kind of get the basics right and if you do that you'll do pretty well in the interview as well um so first of all before i move on to the structure that i am going to suggest you uh, you really need to understand one thing is that always think that you're looking at your cv from the perspective of the person who's going to read it um so if you're sending in my your, your cv and i am the one who's kind of with the person who's 6 7 6 6 3 years of experience in the industry and i'm going to read it you kind of need to see okay how will i think as compared to how you were thinking about the cv so that is i think the very first uh, foremost thing to do and the structure that i'm going to suggest is first and foremost thing is that name and contact information should definitely be on top um the reason for this is that uh, it is easy for the hr for the manager or anything over there who can kind of uh, if you they want to contact you um they really need your information right on top and in a place where they can find it easily um uh, what you need to mention in it is your email your phone number and your um, location location you don't need to mention your address complete address or but a city is definitely uh, important because if you're living somewhere else so the manager might think that you know um what would we do about people out of uh, the hall or anything like that and uh, so picture is not necessary and the reason i say that is that um, uh, i'm sure you guys are aware as well that recently we are Uh, putting in a lot of effort to kind of get away from any sort of this in the offices and uh, i believe if you have to hire a person on the way they look or on the the way they have this kind of dressed up in the picture they sent you um, that is a very very uh, i would believe weak approach to kind of finding good candidates um, so i i never look at the pictures and i, uh, I just feel that it is a waste of space on your cv if you just add your picture So it kind of takes a lot of space over there. So remove the picture, uh, move your things up, and kind of move to the important part over there. Um, so as I talk about education and quali qualifications, um, so a lot of people, um, if you go online and search, you will probably find that education and qualifications kind of come at the very end. Uh, now again, this is your call, whatever you want to do, but I would again suggest that you put it on the top. um the reason and especially because if you have kind of graduated in a specific degree that i want to hire for this job let's say if you are graduated in textile design in the position position of a textile designer so i'd love to see um it very the it on the top and uh, simple similar is about the architecture thing as well because these are fields where you need specialized knowledge and you cannot hire anyone uh for example a person with an accounting background would not be the ideal candidate for a textile or an architecture position right um so mention the education and qualifications uh, at the top by qualifications what i mean is that apart from education there are a lot of things that you can do as well uh, so let's say if i talk about myself i have learned uh, this new software called tableau uh, in the quarantine time last year which is a data analysis software it is very sought after in the modern times so i specifically mention it on my cv that i am a professional at tableau as well and there is a qualification that i can mention right So do uh, write these over there. For example, if uh, and from people from architecture, 
have kind of worked under a very popular or a very famous architect and even done their internship over there and they've given a certificate so what you can do you can even convert that into a qualification as well so what you can say is that um certified experience from mr this 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 who is uh, uh, who has been in the field of architecture in pakistan for this year right so it really puts a very good impression if you kind of put it on the top education qualifications um so if i move on to summary and personal statement uh, again i don't see a lot of use of it if you do not mention a very um, a, a thing that is not cliched uh, because to be honest uh, in the last one year all the cvs that have come up with they have a very generic summary or personal statement um if you want me to show you what a summary or a personal statement is let me kind of take out a cv and show it to you so i can find one um just give me a minute so if you can see the screen over here um here it mentions objective where it's written that you can kind of enter your core objective and the section of the resume the objective is typically two to three sentences which provide an overview of your career objective um once again the reason that i'm telling you that you should maybe try and avoid this is particularly because i will not look at your objective until or unless it stands out um what can what do i mean by standing out is that if you've done something which um, the general population or the general talent has not done uh if i give you an example of this is that for example if you write that i am looking for a uh challenging job in the industry which is one line which is very popular among the people that come in it has no use at all um in the cv but if you kind of write that um, my passion for architecture kind of grew on when i visited a certain location and i kind of realized okay this is what i want to do and i was very interested in the design and everything so this is something which is new so this is something which kind of excites me okay that this person has a passion for something and it grew from somewhere and he needs to mention that to me right so i really hope you understand the difference in this um if you're just copying pasting a personal statement from another cv please don't do that uh, it leaves a very bad impression so right after this we come on to core skills um, again talking about core skills so this is very similar to the personal statement where people tend to write all of the skills they find on linkedin or google or anything for example they go and search that what are the popular skills in textile and designing and whatever they find they kind of write it into it you know so if i see 20 skills or 15 skills mentioned over there i will just consider this as um, so that the person has made it up um but however if you look at this uh, job requirement or you look at the skills requirement of the particular job and then you decide okay these are the skills that i need to mention for the job um so for example if you mention that i am a, a highly creative person because of this uh, this specific thing so if this is a skill that you've kind of achieved over the years and i'd be interested okay that how this is add value to the um position and i'd be asking you that as well in the uh, uh, interview as well so please keep in mind that you only need to go mention the core skills that are related to the job if you don't have any don't mention it um so if i talk about work experience um, it is pretty straight forward that you have to kind of mention the work experience in a reverse chronological order um reverse chronological order basically means that you have to mention your latest experience first and then kind of go down to your first experience or whatever you have done um share as much detail as you can and quantify your success statements particularly means that Uh, so if you have written that i did really well in varda let's say i don't know what really well is right really well can kind of uh, vary from uh, one person to another but if you write that for example in one year i created uh, 2000 designs for varda let's say 1000 designs or 500 designs and uh, out of those um, 250 of those were hot sellers in the market so this is an information that kind of really puts me on my uh, toes right so i'll see okay so this is the person who did really well in terms of their designing and the sales that the design was generating so then i would be interested more in uh, uh, what you do and what you do not so always try and quantify your success uh, do not write sweeping statements that i did really well i performed very well i did uh, i went out to the field so what did you do when you went out to the field uh, tell me um, how many field visits did you have uh, what did you achieve when you go on the field 
so this is something that is very important that you have to mention um especially in future your key achievements is particularly what means is that whatever place you are i'm sure there is a highlight whether you are studying whether you are working or anything um i'm sure there is a highlight uh, over there that you remember that okay this was my achievement and i would uh, definitely like you to highlight it to kind of mention it on the top and then kind of move forward with the things that you've done in the job as well and uh, finally i think one of the most important topics over here uh, is that for those having zero experience in the industry what should they write um, the reason i'm saying it is important because i am sure that most of the students over here have um, limited or zero working experience so what do you do over here um what you can do is that you can mention any sort of work that you've done even if it was paid or not that you think will kind of add to your cv um this can be voluntary work this can be paid work uh this can be an internship anywhere or something that you even did on your own as well so let's say if you took an initiative and you kind of uh, did some freelancing as well you can mention that over here as well but please do not do not leave the work experience empty by saying that i am a fresh graduate um it really means that you have done or thought of doing nothing at all uh, during the years that you were studying over there um so definitely mention over here and even if you are writing about an internship so what people do is that they make the mistake of uh, not taking their internship experience seriously and just kind of write in one line that i did an internship over here you really need to do the same thing that you were doing for the experience part and quantify your successes at the internship as well so for example even if you worked one month at an internship how many designs did you create over there right um how many designs did you assist over there maybe if create is not the right word over here so do kind of go into the detail of any voluntary or internship work you have done as well and that will kind of get you through um whatever that you're trying to do um so moving forward to the next slide uh another question that i regularly get is about hobbies and interest um again only add hobbies and interest if it adds to the cv <laughs> so i get a lot of uh, cvs which mention that i like to watch movies so what do i do if you like to watch movies i really don't care if you like to watch netflix or not or what your favorite movie is right uh but if you again mention over here that uh, let's say you're a musician um why is that of interest to me it is because um the job requires creativity and music leads to creativity right so this is kind of one thing that i would specifically mention uh, over here similarly if you're good at arts if you're good at anything else uh, in your hobbies and interest only only add if it adds to the cv and the job that you're applying to otherwise leave everything out and don't mention over there um sports again is a good thing to mention as well because sports leads to team work sport leads to competitiveness sports leads to creativity uh, so it is a good point to mention but for another thing that i want to mention over here that only mention these hobbies if you're really good at it so if you have played one football game in uh, the whole year and you write i am really good at football that would be a very uh, weak statement to make because i can obviously obviously ask you over here that okay what do you do in football and i really not like you if uh, you're lying about the experience that you have in your hobbies and everything in interest so do take this seriously and mention only things that you add to your cv um as far as proofreading is concerned the reason that i mentioned proofreading over here is that uh, i get uh, lots of cvs especially in the i don't know what's wrong with the fashion industry over here but uh, i'm not being biased or anything but in my previous jobs it was not the case but over here i get a lot of uh, grammatical and spelling errors in the cv uh, which is a huge turn off for me um, if you cannot uh, just look into your cv and get find mistakes over there uh, how do i expect you to kind of do your best when you're working over here right uh so do do if you proofread your cv multiple times not even once and you know, one good idea can be maybe to kind of send it to someone who's a professional already and uh, ask them to kind of highlight major issues in the cv uh so you don't kind of face any issues when you kind of go forward um i think my last slide over here would be about cv design um first of all i need to explain what the difference in a structure and a design is so structure is basically what come first what come second for example i had educational experience then i had academic experience but cv design is how your cv looks uh, to the person who's kind of viewing it what colors do you add or add to it um so this is a tricky question especially for the industry that we're talking about if we're talking about um, the designing and uh, architecture industry i would uh, specifically mention that we are looking for creative people right uh, so what shows creativity is that if you can kind of design your cv in multiple ways or different ways 
or kind of kind of make it stand out from the normal series that i do that uh but please don't outdo yourself um, it does not mean that you kind of have to send me a cv with bright red colors in it which uh, i would hate uh but uh, i think you can kind of uh, brighten up and color up your cv um and uh, that wouldn't hurt you in this specific industry please note i'm mentioning in this specific industry if i was a accountant or a, a somewhere in the field of accounting or audit or anything i would definitely say send it in a traditional black and white manner uh because expectations differ in the industry that you're talking about right um so again this does not mean that you cannot send it in a black and white manner in this specific industry but it would i think add points to whatever you're doing um it kind of uh, change the perspective of the person who's kind of looking at your cv as well um uh, if i can give you an example let me kind of go back to the some of the examples that i do have with me um so this is just a second this is an example of a cv that i did uh, find out so what you see is that uh, he has specifically highlighted a column in the cv and um added a orange color and a green color to it uh, i would not mind this um the particular reason for this is that maybe he is applying for a job um where photoshop or powerpoint or something is really specifically needed for the job and he highlighted that uh, it is a technical position and highlighted that with a different color and i'd be happy if you do that i don't i don't uh, care however this cv i would not be very happy with this because what you've done is that you've played around with the colors but the, those colors are kind of hampering my um, reading frequency so if i look at the place where pink is kind of ending and white is starting um i would be confused ki mai kya pad raha hu you know um so don't use um too out there uh, colors or cutting designs uh too simple designs but you can um, definitely uh kind of experiment around uh, one other example i can give you is that instead of mentioning that excel you already got it excel what you can do is that you can use these um uh green and white tabs which kind of show that okay he is 3 out of 5 at excel but 4 out of 5 at powerpoint so it really kind of this again quantifies it that i was talking about previously as well it quantifies uh whatever that you're sharing with me as well um so i think that is um it from my end in terms of uh, the basics and what you should do and what you should not do i'd love to move on to any questions that i might have and maybe manu can share the series with me and we can move forward with that yes faiz i would like to um show the series that we have we have received and um i would like you to comment on those series whether uh, what are the do's and don'ts of of you know the series let me yeah. share that with you please just to uh, just to precaution that we're taking so if you're sharing sharing someone else's cv please do uh, remove the name from it so anyone cannot see it i don't want to find past judgments on specific people okay 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 so meanwhile files can you tell us um, what are the best uh, websites or you know uh, platforms for students to uh, if if they want to work as a freelancer what are the best websites or platforms for uh, for them to you know explore as a freelancer if if they are not getting job in these trying times of covid it's really difficult for students to uh, you know go out step out of the their their houses their hostels whatever they are wherever they are uh what what's what's the best that you can suggest um so basically uh, some people who are working for me in my department as well do freelancing in terms of after the office hours that they're uh, working right now so what happens is that um, fiverr is a, a very very popular website where you can go and kind of find this work up work um, is something that has been popular recently uh, which you can obviously look at simply hired is one um so these are some of those that i have kind of heard and you know um you can find good assignments over there as well um apart from these online websites i would specifically ask people to kind of use their network as well um the reason that i say that is that for example there was a designer that i knew who kind of left wada but he's kind of doing his own thing now but sometimes when i need him i reach out to him directly and say okay, okay just get this done or anything like that so use your personal contact especially if you're living in pakistan and you know people who are working on the industry as well uh, already and you'll find lots of opportunities up there but uh, the website i mentioned you can kind of go and explore those as well
I okay, hope thank you so much. Yes, yes. Uh, I would like students to, if if they have any, um, you know, any questions, I would like them to unmute it one at a time and ask ask them to Pais directly. I think right now. Okay, so um, Faiz, how would you explain that? Um, because because we know that you've successfully launched twelve collections so far with three thousand plus designs in more than a hundred stores of Wada nationwide. So, uh, what do you what do you say? What are the key you know components that you have been working since the first day till now? Jo aapko help kiye hain abhi tak yahan pahunchne mein and and you have you have accomplished so much, mashallah, mashallah. How would you, uh, what what tips would you give, give to our students? Um, thank you, Manu. That is a very good question. Um, so I would uh, specifically mention over here that uh, when I came into uh, this particular company, I had no idea about the textile or the fashion or designing industry over here. Um, I really think that whatever place that you go to, the first and foremost step is that put in time to learn about the industry even before you come here and even after you're here and don't kind of jump to make changes as soon as you're there. Um, you kind of make a fool of yourself if you do that um, because obviously the people who are working here and been in the industry for so many years right now know much more than you do. Um, wherever you have a degree from, whether it's Lams or it's UMT, whether it's somewhere abroad, uh, just respect the people who are already working here. And uh, one other people, the thing that I would like to mention is kind of develop mentors when you're there. So I remember that when I came over here, there were two people who kind of took me under their wing and would teach each and everything to me, uh, going above and beyond what they're doing. And the only reason they did that was because I was nice to them, right? So be nice to people, ask for help. Uh, and uh, learn under the wings of people who are already working in the industry before making big changes. Um, so in the first year, I did not achieve uh, huge successes over here. But uh, in the very next year, um, the numbers that I have to explain kind of speak a lot about how I learned in the first year and kind of made changes. So there's no specific timeline on how you grow or how you learn. But I believe that would be the first step. And the second step would be to um, highlight challenges as you go along. Um, you cannot and never uh, solve each and every challenge that you have. Um, so highlight all the challenges that you have and pick which ones you can fight and which ones you can resolve and leave out the other ones to kind of uh, deal with them in the future or expect some other people to kind of resolve them. Um, then that would kind of help you in achieving small success. And when you're kind of big in the company, then you can move on to the bigger challenges as well. So these are some uh, uh, suggestions and, uh, and advice from you. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Faiz. Uh, because I have got those CVs which I think have been passed out ho chuke hai. I would like to show uh, one CV just ke upar comments would be really, really helpful for us. Uh, but name is there. I just cannot edit it at this point. Would you uh, would you be uh, kind you enough can, to comment uh, on that? Just uh, crop it using the snipping tool on your uh, uh, laptop and show me oh, the image. Okay. Okay, just uh, it will it will I think it will take some time because I extracted those CVs a long time ago. Can you please uh, still comment on that? Okay, if the student is okay with it, I don't have it. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Is screen visible? Uh, not yet. Oh, yeah, I have the screen. Yes, please. How would we, uh, you know, analyze this CV if 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 you get that? Agar aapko ye mile CV, to aap matlab kis tarah se ab do's and don'ts iske zaroor mein batayega. Okay, can I just go through it for a minute and then kind of? Yes, 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 yes. Please, thank you. For all the students out there, I would like you to comment. If uh, you are not here on the mic, agar aap unmute karna chahte, I would like you to uh, uh, I would like you to comment in the section. Chat me please koi na koi question We have Pais Rashid here from uh, Varda. 
Can you please zoom out and uh, show me the whole series? Uh, can you please zoom out the minus button on the top? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, as ma'am, you have asked us to uh, make a comment on this CV. So I would say that uh, I had some uh, basic understanding about the CV structure and the points I just heard from sir. Uh, I think the uh, CV is quite lengthy. Uh, he has a lot of paragraphs there and I guess it should be in bullet form. Uh, thus, it would have been easier for the reader uh, to get the crux. Uh Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Manu, can you please go down? Uh, Manu, can you please move the move it down? Yes, please. Uh, yes, uh, please wait a minute. Just a minute. G5, is it visible now? I'm just missing the last part of it. Uh, last part, I think that's it about the CV. Education is on the end. And on the left, we have got uh, development tools. That's it. Okay. That's about it. Um, so I would start and kind of uh, comment on this as well. Uh, so anyone who's kind of written the CV, please don't feel bad about whatever I say and take it in a positive manner. Um, first of all, uh, I am very, very um, happy that someone pointed out about the bullet points. Um, it is definitely a very good idea to write all of the information down uh, in bullet points. Um, there's no other way to do it. And uh, I will just get tired by reading the first paragraph that you mentioned over here. Um, the second point is that uh, you do not need to talk about uh, the company that you're working in, right? So it is my job to look up what the company or whatever they're doing, uh, you're just wasting space to kind of write a paragraph in terms of saying that it is a project of a Shabha company and everything, so there's no need of that. Uh, number three is that uh, the profile you mentioned over here, I'm sure you've heard me saying that only add your profile if um, it adds value to the CV. Uh, mentioning words like I am passionate, hardworking, and extremely driven, um, anyone can say that. I cannot quantify that and it does not really matter. Uh, the words that you're saying. Uh, so please write a profile or a personal statement over here if it adds no value to the CV. Um, I am not very happy with the structure. Uh, Bakas, Iqbal, and graphic designer, the huge name that you've written over here, uh, there's no need to do that, right? Uh, you're not adding a picture over here and uh, you're just um, adding this huge box on your CV, which only says your name. If you would have just added it on the top as well, I would have been happy with it. And, uh, you know, it could have done the job. Um, if I move on to the education, um, again, 
I prefer that the education comes on top uh, because I can then relate to it more uh, if you have experience related to what you already did in your industry and then kind of decide what do I have to do. Um, if education is way down below, so I'll probably go down first and then move back and which is a hassle and everything. Um, so please write education, um, contact information and your name right at the top. Uh, the final thing that I want to highlight on this CV is uh, again, look at the skills. Um, there are so much skills over here that I would get lost into it and kind of lose focus on what is important or not. So brainstorming, organizing, adaptability, research, and photo editing is not something that you need to mention over here, even project management. Right? If you're a graphic designer, I obviously know that your photo, you can edit photos, but there's no point of kind of uh, mention it over here as well. However, web content development is a great skill. UI design is a good skill to mention. Um, do mention these, these skills who kind of add value to your CV. And other than that, they have no objective of uh, the skills over here. And the development tools that you're using, uh, again, because you're in the designing business and uh, nature of your job is such is that development tools are very important to me. You need to do two things over here. First of all, you need to take the development skills to the top and tell me how good you are at these. So for example, if you're not good at Photoshop and read your whole CV, it wouldn't really make sense to me that, okay, he has worked a lot, but he's not good at Photoshop, right? Um, that is a requirement in, in my office. So just move the development tools to the top and add um, rating points to your development tools as well. So how good are you at Photoshop? How good are you at Illustrator? And uh, Python is a brilliant thing that has been going on uh, recently and i would love someone to have that experience so please do highlight it and take it to the top uh, again python the spellings of python is wrong um, i would have a very bad impression if you uh, mention that over here as well so these are some of the things that uh, i would like to highlight in this particular cv and if you just make these changes i'm sure uh, it is a pretty good feeling uh, font, I would say font is really nice. Uh, thoda sa agar bada ho jai to, uh, hai. Your uh, feedback means a lot, Faiz. I really, really appreciate that. If students have any question, I would again say you are welcome here. This is an open, free space. You can talk easily. And um, achha, yes, you're right about the education. Education students, it always comes on the front and on on the top because education ke baad hi aapka experience wagaira hai jo wo count hoga i would like to show another cv uh, would you like to comment on that faiz definitely yeah okay thank you so much Is this visible to you all? Yeah, thank you. Faiz, hume aap clarity dijiye ga language ke upper ye jo is tarah se students likhte hain ye kitna important hai interests ke bare mein jo is tarah se likhte hain wo kitna important hai and one more thing yahan par jo inki branding statement hai iske bare mein bhi zarur bataiye ga address itna detailed mein hai iske bare mein bhi zara bataiye ga yeah um, thank you manu i was then, uh, thinking of uh, kind of answering the question as well yeah <laughs> And then uh, one more thing, here, the months add months. 
वो हाउ वुड यू कमेंट ऑन ऑन दैट के मतलब अब इनकी जो एजुकेशन है उसके साथ इन्होंने कोर्स भी लिखा हुआ है हालांकि कोर्सेज तो बहुत सारे बच्चे पढ़ते हैं तो वुड यू रिकमेंड कि कोर्सेज लिखे जाने चाहिए या सर्टिफिकेशन अगर उनके पास हैं जो भी उन्होंने कोई कोर्स अदर देन उनकी डिग्री के अलावा जो उन्होंने कोर्स किए हों तो उसके बारे में क्या आप क्या आप बताएंगे हमें yeah uh, thank you manul for those insightful questions i'll try to answer all of them one by one uh, so first of all um, the branding statement that she has written on the top again uh, i don't see a use for it specifically because so if i kind of read the first sentence to use my theoretical and technical logic for the betterment of an organization uh, what technical knowledge are you talking about what theoretical knowledge are you talking about um, everyone has technical theoretical knowledge somehow right but uh, why does this uh, help in the job that you're applying or the organization that you're coming to If you are writing it, then mention it specifically. Otherwise, don't mention it. The adopt the organization culture and contribute to development of organization. Um, everyone is expected to do that. So if you don't do that, you will be doing a pretty bad job, I think. Uh, so again, no need to mention it over here. And to learn the art of identifying, facing, and tackling the challenging issues and problems in the field. Again, um, this is something that uh, you are expected to do. So please, please only mention the, a branding statement if. Uh, you think you are standing out from other people by a specific skill or by a specific thing that you have and you need to kind of tell uh, the person right away so that answers your first question manur if i move on to the second question in terms of the address um so there's no uh, harm in kind of uh, mentioning the whole address but uh, i don't think we need it until or unless you kind of land the job as well um it matters if specifically if you are out applying out of the country uh so they might need to send you something a contract or anything then specifically you need the full address over here but if you're not you can just mention that you're looking for opportunities in lahore or just lahore that would be good enough um if i come on to the education um the writing the months first of all yes definitely uh it does matter the reason for it is that if you're a fresh graduate and let's say i'm hiring right now in the month of april and you have to graduate in the month of may um then i would kind of think about okay so this person might be late to the position so i won't consider that particular person however if you're already working in the field and uh, you have experience then i don't think there is a need to kind of add the months over there um that is my suggestion in terms of courses uh, i believe you need to mention courses where they are specific to the industry so i like that this girl has kind of mentioned the course over here because it is a course that uh, specifically tells us that it was in an apparel industry or it was related to the apparel industry so i would be happy to kind of read this and discuss this in an interview as well but uh, if it is not relevant then i agree with you that we should mention qualification instead of courses over here as well um so before moving down to your other questions i really like to comment on the skills over here um again um, this is a poor structure to kind of add skills over here because these skills do not make you stand out uh, of the crowd uh first of all excellent communication skills i don't think it's a need to mention over here when i'll interview you i'll identify if you have good communication skills or not active confident and then in this third third fourth line you're again adding confident and determined um so it doesn't make sense you've uh, repeated the first two um, that is a mistake of proofreading uh, so just remove all of these skills and only add a skill if you feel that um, uh, there's a need to kind of do that uh in terms of personal projects um again these are not specific projects that we are talking about so what is a productivity improvement project i, I for example i have no idea what this project is right so right what did you do in the project so a project needs kind of explanation as similar as to the your work experience because especially for uh, people coming with a no work experience because they will kind of uh, say that we did this project and we did this this is in the job project so productivity improvement uh, alone is not a very good idea um hr policies project on us apparel and gunny class this is a good example of the heading but you need to kind of elaborate on what did you do over there uh, again the third line doesn't make sense because it is very very generic um if you move down uh, maruna so languages that was your question i assume uh, languages are to be entered in the cv uh, in two scenarios uh, the first scenario if you have a language that is kind of stands out from the crowd so let's say if you speak pashto uh, it would be a good idea to mention it over here but if you speak a language that is spoken all over pakistan english urdu uh, even punjabi punjab i think you can mention punjabi because obviously it is uh, too specific to a region 
uh but pashto punjabi saraiki is a good example if you know french or spanish is a good example of mentioning it over here but otherwise there is no need because i am assuming that you already know english and hindi over here um however the second scenario that i was talking about is if there is a job which requires you to be really good at english um so one example in my industry is a customer service person a customer service person needs to have really really accurate and good english to kind of write the comments down and take the calls and everything so if you're not good at english i wouldn't hire you as a customer service representative so it really depends on the job you're applying as well um as far as the interest are concerned um, again as i mentioned if these interest add to your cv please do mention it traveling badminton debate are good interest to mention to be honest uh, all of these develop your uh, soft skills and kind of uh, help you to have a discussion in the interview with the employer as well reading uh, is a good skill as well it might improve your english and it might improve your readability and everything uh, even uh, increase your imagination as well so yeah i i don't have a, an issue with the interest mentioned uh, here if there's any other question manu please do let me know about the cv oh yes definitely thank you so much faiz for this uh, uh, aapke comments they really really mean a lot acha mujhe ek aur cheez add karni thi ke bachche yahan par usually jo mere paas bhi cvs agar aaye aur jo humne bhi फिल्टर करके आगे देनी होती है कंपनीज में वो यही होता है कि इंटरेस्ट लिखा होता है कई कई जगहों पर बच्चों ने हॉबीज लिखा होता है तो आई वुड लाइक टू ऐड कि हॉबीज इज इज एन ऑब्सलीट टर्म नाउ इंटरेस्ट को ज्यादा यूज किया करें और वो वाले इंटरेस्ट डाला करें जो वाकई में यू नो आउटडोर्स ही हों जरा आपका बताते हों कि हाउ मच यू नो कम्युनिकेटिव या सोशली किस तरह से आप एक्ट करते हैं अच्छा वी हैव अ क्वेश्चन हेयर Uh, the question is if we have worked on a project for a certain company or a client do we need to mention the company or just highlighting the project is enough uh, what would you, you say about that you mention the company over here um the reason for that is so i'll give you an example i did a project in mayfair industries which was a, a biscuit and a candy company and uh, i had launched their product for them right uh, it was a marketing uh, specific project and uh, when i mentioned that i did it for mayfair so a lot of specific questions come out in the interview phase as well so okay which product were you working on who were you working with they might know someone there and everything so please always always uh, mention the company um, there's someone saying there's no need to mention the company uh, but i will ask you please uh, think about it once again and do do uh, mention the company in the cv uh, uh sir uh, i have got a question about this cv yeah please do ask uh yes uh, sir i can see some uh, negative space in the bottom left corner uh what are your views on it uh, i mean uh, if i have to uh, judge the cv uh, of a graphic designer uh i would uh, obviously prefer someone uh, who have uh, made a structure which is balanced or somewhat symmetrical or asymmetrical uh you know uh, it's about his uh, skills that uh, how he manages to produce a document um yeah thank you great question once again um just one thing i would like to highlight is that whenever you're talking about uh, someone in third person always use his or her because um, there are <laughs> obviously female working in the um in pakistan as well and we really need to kind of get uh, away from this discrimination issue uh, so basically uh, let's getting back to the point uh, i love your point uh, if you're hiring hiring a graphic designer the negative space should not be there uh, what uh, he or she can do is that uh, they can use a different format over here there was no need to kind of use a format that is parallel to each other they could use a very basic format of a cv where you just go down from top to bottom and you could add these education and everything that you've written on the left to the top and kind of take it down so very good point uh, mentioned by you and i'd love if uh, other people can make a contribution over here um also uh, you guys are welcome to challenge whatever i say as well i am um, i have been in the field for 6 7 years but that does not mean that everything i say is kind of written in stone i'd love if someone can kind of raise their hand and say you're saying this wrong and kind i can can i then explain to you what i mean by the point i would be uh, really happy agar bachche zara thoda sa aur uh, interactive ho kar pucha acha there questions hamare paas zarur aa rahe hain this is dr fariya cdcr presidency okay acha 
this is a little bit off the track, but uh, Faiz, would you like uh, to tell us a little bit uh, students ko ke jab pucha jata hai in an interview ye to hum cv ke upar baat kar rahe the ab zara sa agar thoda sa thoda sa off track ho ki interview ke andar agar ab jate hain wo theek hai to uh, employer puchta hai ke uh, how, why should we hire you and why why do you think ki you are the best source ya aap kyun kis tarah hamari company ke liye kaam aa sakte hain aap aap aise kya uh, you know, unique, unique things. What should be the answer to this? Um, wonderful question. Uh, thank you, Faiz. Even if it's uh, related to the interview stage. I'd love to answer this as well. Um, so I believe uh, nowadays, especially when you see so many uh, students graduating out of so many different uh, uh, universities, competition is really, really tough out there, right? Um, so you can um, definitely, so what this is normally considered as is this is the elevator pitch. Uh, I'm sure there are certain on attendance. You can just go to YouTube and kind of practice the elevator pitches. But if I just add my two cents to it is that Research is um, the main, main point over here, how you can name this question. Uh, whenever I go for an interview, I spend at least two to three days doing research about the company from whatever platform that I can find. I go to LinkedIn, I go to social media, Instagram, Facebook. I try to find a person in the working in the company and talk to them for an hour at least to kind of see what challenges the company is facing, what are they doing, what do they require for me and everything. Once you have written that down, it is very, very easy to answer this question. So for example, if you come to Varda and you get to, uh, you talk to someone in Varda or you go and research on the social media, you find out that there are, let's say, for example, um, so this is just a generic statement that there are a few articles available on the website. So if they come in, if this a supply chain interview and they ask you that why, what can you add to the company, they can take this point and kind of help it along that I can do this specifically to resolve this problem for you. Um, so this is a good way to answer the question. Research, research is a must. Uh, and uh, I would, uh, the second point over here would be after research to kind of list down your skills and see what is the skill that makes you kind of stand out from the rest of the crowd. Um, and what you can do is that you can work on developing these skills as well. So I previously mentioned, I know um, uh, Tableau, someone had mentioned on this TV that they know UI, um, UX design. Uh, so these are some things that, for example, if you're getting into by a designer and you say that what can add, you can add to the company, you tell them that, you know, this is something that I have different from the candidates you might have interviewed. And uh, this way I can help you kind of grow better or do things better as compared to what you're doing right now. So these are the two techniques that you can really adopt. Sir, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Assalamu alaikum. Well, I guess, uh... So sorry, I, I'm a little nervous to ask uh, a question uh, that I have about my CV. So I was thinking that you can help me out build a better CV and- Don't worry, I won't jump out of the window. Right, so uh, can I share my uh, CV uh, with you? Can yeah, I, yeah, definitely. I, uh, can the person share their screen, Manu? Yes, yes, definitely they can. Right. So uh, let me open my CV first. Uh, okay, uh, here's uh, my CV that I'm uh, currently working on. So uh, I would like to share some things that I had in there. So the first of all, you, you can see uh, the picture that most of the CVs have. Uh, most of the uh, people uh, uh, tend to add their uh, picture in the CV. So people can view the uh, what kind, what type of person he is uh, visually and uh, how does he seem like in a real person. So that's the first thing that I uh, took out in my CV uh, because uh, I thought I think uh, in my vision if a person is talking to someone and uh, having an interview of him, uh, then it's really uh, important to have a communication with a guy. Uh, rather than ju rather than just a video of him, so as 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 far as the uh, document goes, I'm cutting you right now. Um, would it help if I just go through the complete CV and give you pointers? Will that help? Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly, sir. Yeah, and that would help a lot. Just uh, zoom out and let me see the whole CV and just give me a minute. I'll kind of talk to you. Uh, not that okay, much. Sir. <laughs> yeah, just zoom in a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Just give me a minute. Okay, sir. Thank you.
um okay so i'll just uh, try to be brief and tell you uh, no need to be nervous i'll just point out a few things and please don't mind whatever i say i'm sure you'll learn from it uh, so the first thing that i uh, i have uh, already explained a number of times before is that uh, the who am i part which is your personal statement of what you call your branding statement um it does not make sense uh, of adding it over here because it does not add something which i don't already know um so if i take example of the last line the power of teamwork is the key to effective marketing plan um, i already know that i worked uh, for a few years and if i'm reading the cv i'll say okay i don't need to need that information right now so please please only mention in the who am i or personal statement part if you feel that there is something that makes you stand out and write a story behind it write, write it in a way that makes it interesting for me to read it as well i uh, if i have let's say 10 cvs in front of me uh would you think i'd read every passage of six five lines which is not interesting uh, so please if you uh, plan to do it uh, number one point is that add it if you have something different to say number two uh, create a story around it if i move on to education you have uh, written it down um, pretty well but i think the order should be uh, in the opposite manner um you should first talk about your bachelor and high school and then kind of go to the primary school um every time you're writing a cv do it in a reverse chronological order uh, not in a chronological order because i really need to know what you've done recently as compared to what you did in the past um in terms of uh, the education the places you did it with please do mention the year um where you uh, graduated from these specific places because that will kind of help me see how much experience you have or if you are a recent graduate or whatever i'd love to kind of verify that information as well if i move on to the experience um so please do not order your cv um or kind of uh, structure your cv with the skills what you've done that is you've mentioned brand and marketing and then kind of mentioned the experience that you have what uh, matters more to me is your the company that you worked in the clients that you worked with or whatever and uh, what position you have how many years did you work there and what achievements did you have over there um branding and marketing team building entrepreneurship you can all kind of write that in skills or uh, qualifications or something like that if you have something fruitful to say over there so experience definitely needs a lot of work and improvement over here uh, and if i talk about skills uh, again you've done it uh, pretty pretty well uh, it was something that i was talking about previously as well but um, again please only mention those skills that are relevant to the job uh, for example marketing and social media might not be relevant to a specific job but illustration and photoshop might be right so only write those skills uh, which are specific to the job if you think all of the skills are specific then obviously you can go ahead with it but uh, um, otherwise don't do that and the contact information i mentioned it in my um, as i started that you really need to move it right uh, on top of the cv uh, and not at the bottom of the cv because it will make it maine aaj aise mein aapko ye batata hu ye socha tha Uh, while I was talking, that you did not mention your email, but now that I see the contact in the below, now I know okay, you mentioned it. So please don't uh, mention contact at the end. I hope that clarifies everything. If you still have a question, Sama, I'd love to answer. See, अपने जो आप I I say that to all these students, अपने नाम के बाद फॉरन अपना contact अपनी detail लिखा करें अपना contact your email अगर आपको कहीं पे Fiverr या अब अब पे कहीं पे भी आपका अगर अकाउंट है तो वो अपना प्लीज जरूर ऐड किया करें ब्रांडिंग स्टेटमेंट के बारे में जो सरफाइज uh, ने बोला है आई रियली होप आप सबको समझ में आया है एजुकेशन के बारे में भी प्लीज ऑल ऑफ यू बी वेरी वेरी स्पेसिफिक जो आपने पर्टिकुलरली उस वक्त किया है वो ही ऐड किया करें सर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन अबाउट ब्रांडिंग स्टेटमेंट जी जी uh, जी सर बेसिकली आई एम अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ लास्ट मेस्टर इन आर्किटेक्चर एंड लेट्स से आफ्टर ग्रेजुएशन एंड आई एम क्वाइट इंथ्यूजिक अबाउट इको डिजाइन और इको फ्रेंडली डिजाइन सो दे इज दिस फर्म इन लाहौर विच इज बींग मैनेज बाय सर राशिद रशीद खान सो वट इफ आई एम अप्लाइंग देयर एंड आई मेक माई ब्रांडिंग स्टेटमेंट समवर लाइक Uh, there i'll be like ke maine uh, degree kar li hai and i am really enthusiastic about your work uh, you have done a uh, great work in uh, eco friendly designs and that's my dream too so that's why uh, i want to work with you there and want to learn from you and uh, and that's what i am passionate about will that be a uh, a uh, kind of stable branding statement or not okay so that is a good question to ask um first of all 
i would like to say that um, uh, it is good that you you have you want to mention that you also have an interest in eco friendly designs or uh, whatever that you're talking about uh, what i would say again build a story around it um, just don't mention that i have interest in eco friendly design go back and uh, think sir, why did you uh, create an interest in the eco friendly uh, sir uh, sorry to interrupt you uh, basically uh, what i'm trying to mention here is Uh, that uh, that is the kind of firm which is famous for it they are doing it and they are the understand. only one I, i completely understand what you're saying just try to mm-hmm. listen and understand what i'm saying i am saying that if you want to design a uh, join a firm that is doing eco friendly design please please mention why do you have an interest in the eco friendly design write a story about it for example you say that the reason that i like it eco friendly design is because this and the reason i do not like the other one is because that right So then they would understand. Okay, this is the reason this person has an interest in it. Just don't write that you have eco-friendly design. That is why I am joining you. They would say that obviously other people are joining it as well. But why specifically are you joining for the eco-friendly design? You will explain your interest. You will write it in a story and you will write it in a manner that um, that person does not get bored or does not say any other irrelevant information. I hope you understand. Thank you so much, Faiz. Thank you. Any other questions? I really hope this is uh, under un- understanding. You you've got the complete understanding for what uh, comments Faiz sir has made. Any other questions? Anyone? uh faiz uh, can you can you make any comments on ke ek ideal cv ek ideal resume kya hoti hai matlab agar aap ek cv aapke paas jo cv aaye theek hai aapke paas resume aaye to aap sabse pehle kya cheez dekhte ho before uh, shortlisting him or her for the interview um so uh, if you guys went through the presentation that i gave you would understand that so there was written on top the structure of the cv or the design there is no one ideal or uh, correct way to kind of do a cv but uh, it it is highly subjective to the job that you're applying for so let's say i recently what i did was that i hired a graphic uh, designer in my company uh, and on the very top it was kind of written in the in the skills area that they really good at photoshop and illustrator and kind of they they attached a profile with it as well that they've done this Uh, work in the past as well so you know it really depends on what job you are applying to and structure is really godly to make it kind of the ideal scene but honestly there is no one way to um, answer that question theek hai thank you so much or anything any additional tips that you would like uh, for the interviewer for for the for the students to ace their uh, interview or ace their cv what would those additional tips be uh, so that is a good question because we're kind of moving on from the cv to the interview stage um what i would particularly mention over here is that i have had uh, interviews in which people write a really really amazing and great cv but don't do well in the interview sometimes because they don't even know what they did in the different companies they were working for so i think the first first step is to um, for example there are some people who kind of done projects or who've done jobs 2 uh, 3 years ago and they don't remember what they did so always coming to the interview you need to kind of go through what you did exactly and uh, you have you need to have everything on your um, toes to kind of realize uh, um, uh, what can i ask from this and uh so i think that is a very uh, can you just give me a minute sorry sure no problem yeah. no problem um sorry for that uh, so i think you really need to have a, an idea uh, about uh, what exactly you have done uh, that is the very very first part of this the second is that um, uh, you you should always be confident about what you're saying and one technique to do that is always ask time to answer a question from uh, from the employer if you're not sure about it Uh, one mistake that people do is that they get confused and say something that uh, in in the uh, you know uh, in rush and then after that they're kind of um, frustrated that why did I there and say that specific thing 
So one obviously one thing that you can do is that uh, um, you can obviously um, take oh, a minute or ask, ask the employer to kind of say that okay, I need a minute to kind of look at this question and then I'll see. Uh, that is one way to do that. Um, one other thing that you really need to do or work on is situational questions. Um, just go on Google and kind of search uh, what are the recent modern interview situation questions. Uh, if I give you one example is that I can ask you, tell us about a time that you uh, failed at something in the past and what did you do about it? So these are questions that you really need to nail and uh, because what these questions do is that these tell us that how will you act in a specific situation. And uh, if you just go on Google and you write down star approach to answering interview questions, you'll specifically come across an approach to, to handle these situation questions as well. So I think these are three big pointers that you need to kind of look after after before coming to an interview. Uh, sir, Assalamu alaikum. I have a question uh, regarding competition. I am actually Abdul Wahab Beg, and uh, uh, the question is re related to competition in the market. Uh, like we are fresh and apprentices and when we just step into professional life, uh, there is a lot of competition and uh, while we are not well prepared for that. So I just want to know that what is the prime and pivotal aspect of the CV that will just make us dominate on other and how we can just uh, uh, like uh, be very confident on that, on that particular as aspect. Um, so you have a very good question, Zula. Uh, Zula's question is particularly about if you are a fresh graduate and you're coming to the job market, you face a lot of competition for people already working there. Um, so what to do about that and what can stand out in your CV? Um, I think um, I have kind of stressed on this point before as well, and I'd, I'd give you an example. Uh, while you're doing your bachelor's or master's or whatever you're doing right now, you can always, always look up what extra or what other thing that you can do apart from the degree that you're doing. So um, just consider an example that someone comes to me and says that these are three CVs and all of the, these are textile designers, right? If one of these textile designers has kind of also has experience in managing social media or has experience in, let's say, uh, pricing or a supply chain or anything like that, or I'm not, by experience, I don't mean that they've worked in it. By experience, I mean that they've done a short course online, go to uh, Google, Udemy or uh, offers or even LinkedIn and do a certain certification, do a, uh, which is very cheap nowadays as well as considering the pandemic and everything. So if you have something like that, it immediately stands out for me. So for example, there are three fresh graduates, I would pick you and say, okay, so this person has kind of gone above and beyond what they are required and then kind of come into it. Uh, the second thing, what you need to realize is kind of come into our shoes as well. Uh, we are looking for fresh graduates all the time. Um, the reason for that is, uh, there, there are two specific reasons for it. The first reason is that uh, a company always looks at costs, right? So sometimes what happens is that for a specific position, they don't have enough budget to kind of hire a person who's already experienced. And this always happens. So they need to get a fresh graduate in there. Um, and the second specific reason would be that there are some people who spend a lot of time in the industry and the relearning process of their uh, uh, these employees is very, very difficult. For a new person, it is easier for me to kind of teach new things and tell them that, okay, this needs to be done and not. So these are two things that you need to understand that we're looking for fresh graduates. Maybe if you come into the market and you see that there's no a lot of competition and I'm not getting the right jobs, you might have a lot of colleagues who are getting the right jobs. So it really means of how you're searching, how you're looking, and what have you done with your CV. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much, Faiz. We have one question from Faiza Said. She says that when we are applying for a firm, thus mentioning that what we are eager to work for with and learn from them is a good statement or would they just be interested in what services we can provide i think what services you can provide is the is the first thing to go to right um that is true but i think the second part is important as well but please do not write that i am trying to become a leader that is why i'm coming to this company and that is something they will provide this is a very very generic statement um write something like that that for example in the a previous collection you launched a, a specific for example you say we launched Kantha collection or we launched a um, chicken curry or anything and i really love that technique and i'd love to come and learn from that from you as well so i'd really really like a person who's very keen on specifying us you know a certain thing and saying that i want to learn that 
But if you just write that I want to become a leader or I want to improve my skills or anything like that, the generic statements won't work. Specific will. ठीक है, thank you so much. Uh, there's there's one CV that I've got. Uh, I would like you to see that. और इस हमारे स्टूडेंट को एक जरा गाइडेंस मिल जाएगी आई होप इट्स विजिबल Yeah, it's visible. Let me just take a minute to kind of go through it. Sure. Thank you. okay um so i'll i'll start uh, kind of analyzing the cv first of all again the profile and objective are kind of taken so much space in the cv which uh, really don't add anything to the um, to the person looking at the cv and anything uh, please please only add things i'll repeat it once again that kind of are relevant to the situation if you're writing about fashion designing tell us why why what is the reason that you're interested in fashion designing what happened in the past uh what made you excited about making clothes and everything so please mention that but all of this uh, are very very generic gen generic terms which not with there's no need for these the profile and objective um where the words and uh, the details were needed was experience um so in terms of experience you really need to kind of go into detail that what did you learn at the jewelry development workshop right uh, learning jewelry manufacturing is very very generic uh, jewelry mein jewelry mein bahut bahut cheezein aa jati hain and what did you learn in it um, which specific jewelry did you make um do you have a certification of it can you, what can uh, you add to it in the future as well really the international design competition i'm very interested about the stc uk and that competition but your cv kind of tells me nothing about it you just say created designs and sketches tell me what designs did you created how did you get in touch with the international competition and everything so that is something that i would really like to know and mention of the cv and try to quantify it as well for example if you went to the international design competition how did you do did you win the third or second or first prize or uh, did you get no kind of highlighted somewhere that okay these designs are really good and everything like that so please um, use all the space that you used in profile and objective in the experience part um moving on to the education uh, you've just structured it very well in terms of new present in terms of the years and everything so i don't have a lot to add to it just that maybe it can come before the experiences uh, rather than after it um in terms of software yeah photoshop and illustrator is a good thing to have but i think so everyone is kind of expected to know word excel and powerpoint as well uh, if you're really 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 good at it and um, um you believe that the people already working there are not good at excel and you are or maybe not good at powerpoint and you are then you need to mention it otherwise there's no need to mention it i probably know that you're good at this or just mention office and you know give a rating to it um in terms of hobbies so um i don't think there's a need to kind of it's good that you've been creative and everything but um you know i'd i'd love to kind of discuss these as well it's it's a different I would, thing i would it's like a, it's a good thing 
I would like yeah, to add something, Faiz, yeah. because hobbies can the ragaram dekhe to me as a layman because I'm not from fashion designing industry. I cannot understand ki hobbies kya hai or hobbies jaise ki maine bataya ki hobbies is now an obsolete word. Please try to use interests. Or wo bhi yeah. please bullets laga ke aap likhe kaun se interests hai. Left side par aapka contact hai jo ki aapke naam ke niche aana chahiye. Faiz, what would you say about the nationality? Is that important? um so the, before i move on to nationality if i can just kind of complete the hobby sure, section sure. Uh, is this that i love that you have mentioned uh, chess in it right so um, i i'd be happy if a person is really good at chess and kind of coming to the organization because they have a broader mind to kind of think and and it really shows the creativity in the person but don't mention it like this just list it down for me that it is easier so i have no idea but the first thing is so just write it down and so i i know and in terms of the question that manur basically put forward uh, nationality pakistani is not needed until unless you're not in pakistan so for example you want to mention that i'm in dubai and i will be moving to pakistan then it is an important factor to write it otherwise there is no need to mention it if i move on to the skills again communication creativity is i don't know how you rate it out of 4 or 5 or 5 or 5 i need to kind of talk to you and discuss that how you, how are you creative so please give examples of these in your cv somewhere so maybe you can give an example in gems and jewelry class which shows or kind of corroborates that you're high in creativity but if you just say it and i'm taking your word for it doesn't really you know make sense for me um uh, finally uh, the the picture and uh, the, the background behind it i don't think it's very professional um uh, you should i think completely remove the picture i would particularly suggest if you want to add and you say that i want to add it please don't use this colorful background that you have and just put the picture there uh, i hope that kind of completes the thank you so much uh, it really really means a lot faiz uh, we took a lot of your time yeah thank you manur um, no issue at all i love looking at the cvs and everything and how people have kind of designed it and maybe i have added some points that maybe can you know help them thank you so much uh, your feedback means a lot your time means a lot your you, the energy you have put in i really really hope students hame bahut acha iska impactful cvs or marketable cvs hum hamare paas aaye aur hum aapko bhi forward kar sake Yeah, yeah. I would, I, I, always, I would really uh, like to see the fresh graduates kind of. If you would be kind enough, uh, uh, would you be uh, comfortable sharing your email address, जहाँ पर हमारे कुछ students, you know, could email you the CVs and you can check them for 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 UMT. Yeah, definitely. I'll just write it in the chat section. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, students. Uh, I really, really hope this was really helpful for you. tomorrow is going to be uh, uh, the linkedin profiling and uh, induction sessions i would really really uh, like ke aap sab isme us un sessions mein participate kare in terms of career week and uh, today session i i think it it went it went good it was really nice thank you so much faiz no problem at all i loved uh, talking to all the students and everything and i hope you guys learned a lot thank you we definitely did thank you thank you take care Thank you, Allah Hafiz.